peace and mercy are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. My dear friends, you may not recognize the name Jacob Perot, but Jacob Perot was the very first American ever awarded the Distinguished Medal of Honor. Now this award, this medal, has been given to ordinary people who have done extraordinary things, both in peacetime and also in war. And since the days of Jacob Perot, countless people have been given this award. But you might look at these people and you would say, these people seem to have no fear. They have courage under fire. So do you know any heroes? Maybe there's a hero sitting next to you. Maybe a police officer, a former soldier, or an active soldier. Maybe some people would say that parents are often unsung heroes. But are you a hero? And I don't just mean somebody who has rescued somebody from a burning building or, or drug a, a fellow soldier across the desert wasteland who's injured. But have you been a hero in maybe just a small little way from rescuing somebody from the fires of hell? Now there's a lot of people out there that haven't heard the truth. A lot of people who are dying without us and and we have the opportunity to be real heroes today. And if you need some encouragement, if you need a good example of some ordinary men who became extraordinary heroes, all you have to do is look in the book of Acts. And really, in some ways, the book of Acts, it reads like a, a valor and courageous book. Because it shows these ordinary men going out to the ends of the earth being real heroes. We see that today in our lesson from Acts chapter 5. The apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders among the people. And all the believers used to meet together in Solomon's colonnade. Then the high priest and all his associates, who were members of the party of the Sadducee, were filled with jealousy. They arrested the apostles and put them in the public jail. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the door of the jail and brought them out. Go stand in the temple courts, he said, and tell the people the full message of this new life. At daybreak, they entered the temple courts, as they had been told, and began to teach the people. When the high priest and his associates arrived, they called together the Sanhedrin, the whole assembly of the elders of Israel, and sent to the jail for the apostles. But on arriving at the jail, the officers did not find them. So they went back and reported. We found the jail securely locked with the guards standing at the doors, but when we opened them, we found no one inside. On hearing this report, the captain of the temple guard and the chief priests were puzzled, wondering what would come of this. Then someone came and said, Look, the men you put in jail are standing in the temple courts teaching the people. That the captain went with his officers and brought the apostles. They did not use force because they feared that the people would stone them. Having brought the apostles, they made them appear before the Sanhedrin, be questioned by the high priest. We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name, he said. Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and are determined to make us guilty of this man's blood. Peter and the other apostles replied, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised Jesus from the dead, whom you had killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him to put his own, and put him at his own right hand as prince and savior, that he might give repentance and forgiveness of sins to Israel. We are witnesses of these things. And so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. Now just think about how far the disciples have come. Think about the disciples on that last night when Jesus was betrayed. There with Jesus in the upper room. 
to a man, they were saying to Jesus, you know what, Jesus, even if you would go to your death, we will stand beside you, we will die too. And then one by one, starting off with Judas, who in some ways had given up on Jesus a long time ago. He was more concerned with worldly things, about money. There goes Judas, off to betray Jesus. Then you get to the Garden of Gethsemane and the disciples were with Jesus, but as that angry Jewish mob approached, many of them ran away in fear. And then there was Peter, poor old Peter, the one who had boasted and bragged probably more than anyone else that he was going to stand there and stay with Jesus to his death. And yet later on that night, Peter could not even admit to that lowly servant girl that he knew who Jesus was. How far the disciples had fallen. How much they had failed their Savior when he needed them most. And it didn't really just stop that night. You remember that first Easter morning where the disciples were. They were sitting there huddled behind locked doors, afraid of the Jewish mob, afraid of the Romans fearing that everything was lost now that their friend and Savior was gone. These men were not acting much like heroes. These men who, who should have known a lot better. But I guess when you look at our lives, we know who our Savior is too. We know what He accomplished. We know, in fact, the rest of the story, what happened on that first Easter Sunday. And yet the world gets into our minds and stirs things around in there, so we start to doubt, we start to fear, we start to lose our trust in our Savior. We put other things in this life in front of Him. We start to lose our connection. And perhaps one of the reasons is because we have a fear of sacrifice. Because as Christians, we know that being a Christian is a life of sacrifice. But that's not exactly the way we've all been taught to grow up. A lot of times we're taught that the world revolves around us. And we think everything should go our way when and wherever we want it to happen. We want the easy way. We want the easy route. We want everything for ourselves. We don't like sacrifice. And so it becomes awfully hard to give back then if we don't like that sacrifice to give back to church, to give back to our God. Yet, it's not a problem to throw our money over at Walmart or, or doing something else with our money. But to give back to God, well, that's, that's our money. Better not touch it. And along with that fear of sacrifice, sometimes we look at, at time. And we say to ourselves, you know what? I know the church needs my help. The pastors and the teachers and everybody else, they're always asking for our help. But, but it's my time. And if I, I volunteer, then I'm going to have to give up things that I want to do. And I know that there are a lot of people out there that haven't heard the truth yet, that, that I could be the one going out there and sharing the truth with them, but, but I can't do it. Let someone out. If you've been there, that's where the disciples were too. The disciples were afraid. They didn't know what to do next. But what changed? What made the disciples so bold to be able to stand up to the ruling Jewish authorities, the Sanhedrin? Listen again to their words. We must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised Jesus from the dead, whom you had killed, by hanging him on a tree. You see, the secret to their boldness was not really a secret at all. The fact that Jesus had been raised from the grave, that Jesus was alive, changed everything for them. The disciples didn't have to fear the Jewish mob or the Romans anymore. They could be bold. They could stand before them. Because the disciples didn't have to fear death anymore. 
Jesus had defeated death. The disciples didn't have to fear the punishment that came from our Heavenly Father because they knew that Jesus took their sins. That punishment, that fear was gone. And the disciples, they didn't have to fear the devil anymore because the devil and his claim on their lives was just a lie. The disciples had no reason to fear. And now that they knew this, now that they knew that their Savior was alive, they weren't going to just sit behind those doors anymore. No, they were going to go out to the ends of the world. They were going to take that message and risk their life and limb to make sure other people knew. Because this message was earth-shaking. It was soul-changing. It was eternity-making. They wanted everybody to know the truth. They took the message so seriously, in fact, that the disciples went to probably the last place on earth I would have ever gone. They went right back into the temple courts. Remember, they were already told, you shouldn't speak about Jesus' name. And later on, they were told that again. And yet they went there right in the temple courts among the people for everybody to see. Now, I was thinking about that. If the disciples were alive today, where would you find them? Maybe they'd be standing in front of the Mormon temple telling people, don't go in there. That place is soul damaging. That place is leading you away from God. Or maybe you'd find the disciples in front of a LGBT group telling them, you know, this lifestyle, this way of life is leading you away from God. You see, the disciples were not afraid anymore. They were going right out onto the battle lines with that message. So the question for each of you today is, are you ready to be heroes too? Are you ready to, to in a small way, save somebody from the fires of hell? Now it might be easy to do with your neighbor or, or somebody you don't really know, but how about your own flesh and blood? Can you say to your son, your daughter, your grandchild, you know, living with your boyfriend or girlfriend before getting married, that's, that's soul damaging? Or how about saying to an unbelieving spouse, I need to talk to you real seriously about your eternity. Are you ready to be a hero? Or are you just going to stay silent so that you don't make way? Brothers and sisters, let's be heroes. God has given us his powerful and effective message. That message that can change hearts and lives. It changed yours. That message that can't be stopped. In fact, you see that in our lesson today. Remember how the disciples at first, they were afraid of the Jewish mob? Well, after they were speaking these words, many people were coming to faith. And in fact, the Sanhedrin was now afraid. They thought that the people were going to stone them. And if you jump ahead a little bit in this story, you, you see the final outcome. You see how really the tide had turned. There was a member of the Sanhedrin. His name was Gamaliel. He's also the mentor for Saul, who later became Paul. Listen to what he said. He said, in this present case, I advise you, leave these men alone. Let them go. For if their purpose or activity is of human origin, it will fail. But if it is from God, you will not be able to stop these men. You will only find yourselves fighting against God. You see, the gospel message is unstoppable. The gospel message has the power to change the world. The disciples, they went from being just a bunch of ordinary men who were scared stiff to being and becoming extraordinary heroes. They went to the ends of the earth to make sure that message was heard. They're gone now. But that message continues, that work continues for each and every one of us. So let's go out there. Let's be heroes. Let's change people's lives, not just for today, 
but for all eternity. Amen.